Well, well, well. Guess who's back for more? Curiosity got the best of you, didn't it? Let's do a little recap just in case you need a bit of refresher or it's our new friend's first time here. In the last video, I shared with you the beginnings of my Chanel journey and the period where my rationality and sense just suddenly disappeared. As I was about to enter the gates of purse peace, a place where you apparently feel content and happy with your handbags. Legend says that many people have tried to enter the gates, but very few were able to enter. Those few are very brave. But at this date, I don't think I'll ever know what that mythical place is. So in this video, I'll continue to share the rest of my Chanel journey. And like all stories, it must come to an end or will it? If you're ready to finish the rest of my Chanel journey, grab your drinks and your snacks because we're about to finish part two. Anyways, where were we? Ah, that's right. It was Karl Lagerfeld's last collection, Fall Winter 2019. Lagerfeld took us to the snowy white mountain tops, maybe even gave us a little glimpse of what Chanel heaven would look like. The show was captivating and I wanted to pay my respects to Lagerfeld by seeing his pieces in person at my home boutique. Because let's be real, this girl ain't catching the next flight to Rue Cambon. I wanted to honor Lagerfeld by choosing a piece that is normally outside of my comfort zone. I initially had my eyes on a white pearl Chanel boy bag. It looked magnificent. Turns out, they only had one stock left when I was there, and my fashion advisor couldn't find it. So she recruited the stock team's help, and they still couldn't find it. Ooh, imagine if it was lost or stolen. Mm. After 30 minutes, they eventually found it on a mannequin, and I saw the leather strap. Ooh, it was really wonky. My fashion advisor ordered one in to be shipped to the boutique so I can pick it up. As I was on my way to pick up my new boy toy, something caught my eye on the display. As if everything around me just turned black and this focus was on this white sequin mini flap, aka first snow. So I asked my fashion advisor if I can just check it out. And as soon as I tried it on, I fell hard. I was torn between the white sequin mini and the pearl boy bag. I knew that I could only justify one out of my comfort zone bag, so I asked my friends for help. The determining factor for me was when my friend sent me this text. The way that the pearls are arranged reminds me of an adult toy. Mm -hmm. I was like, nope, okay, the sequin one is going home with me then. So after this beautiful piece, I realized that I have a shopping problem because I started to drop off the goods at my mom's house and then choose which one I want to smuggle in first. Yeah, it's really that bad. I made a goal for myself to slow the shopping down. I literally talked to myself in the mirror like, girl, you have a problem. You need to calm down. Your mom's house is filled with freaking bags. How are you all gonna smuggle them in? What will be your reasons? You're just gonna keep lying to your partner. In the beginning of 2020, I was doing pretty well, mainly because everything was essentially shut down and we were quarantined. But oh man, around June 2020, I started to get the itch. I have been on a hunt to find my perfect reissue, which was a so black chevron that is not too distressed size, I can go mini or 225. Anyways, as soon as I saw that Chanel started to release this combination, I knew I needed it because I have been bugging my fashion advisor for the past year for this combination. So when the Chanel gods decided to release this combination again, heck yeah, I'm getting it. My fashion advisor shipped it to me and then I realized, bing, your husband's gonna see it because it's shipping to your home. I literally prayed to the Chanel gods. I put up a shrine, you know, saying, please don't let it get it delivered when my husband's inside the house. I knew around what time my FedEx and UPS guy comes and delivers our stuff, but this isn't your regular FedEx man, so I was sweating and panicking. After the reissue, I told myself, girl, you really need to be done here 
because you need to start matching those bling with your handbags, girl. <laughs> so I dip my toes into Cartier and Van Cleef and Arpels. They each have their stories, but that's just another story for another time. With nothing to do at home, I started to browse online and saw the classic flaps released for Fall Winter Act 2. People were buzzing about how gorgeous the ivory iridescent flap is. I was initially unimpressed because all I saw in the pictures were a shiny gold flap. But boy oh boy, was I wrong. I saw pictures of it on Instagram and mm, girl, I fell in love. After seeing the pictures on Instagram, I texted my fashion advisor and says, girl, do you have this? I really need it. This is really pretty. Unfortunately, she told me that the list is already long and they're only receiving six. Feeling defeated, I consoled myself with baked goods, cookies, brownies, and more. I started to embrace the mentality of if it's meant to be, it will be. Then a few weeks later, I get a text from a fashion advisor. Look what I got. And then it was a picture of the ivory iridescent. And I was like, ah! So Ivy and I were meant to be. It was around Christmas time when my fashion advisor texted me, so it was the perfect Christmas miracle. And it was also the perfect timing because my husband hasn't gotten me a present yet. When my husband buys gifts, he doesn't really like buying stuff for me that just devalues over time. So I made a PowerPoint and a little bit of research on why this particular flap is worth it. One, it's really pretty. Two, it's really shiny. Three, it's Chanel. What, could, what more could you ask for? Just kidding, but I did make a PowerPoint. After taking the ivory iridescent home, I entered another state where I, you know, I think my handbag collection's complete. And you know what? Little did I know that this ivory iridescent would spark a different kind of brush. With limited quantities and everybody wanting the same piece, the hunt for highly sought after Chanel flaps are on. So I was on the hunt to find the perfect light pink flap. My perfect pink would be similar to Lady Dior's Lotus Pearl pink bag. I knew that Chanel always releases a pink bag around spring summer so i took a gamble with my fashion advisor and told her hey can you put me on the list for every pink bag coming out for spring summer and she did fast forward to spring summer and pictures of the light pink classic flap started surfacing and it looked a little purple a little too lilac-y for me and I was like, oh man, this is probably gonna be really ugly in person. So I went in the boutique feeling really anxious and like, and just expecting the worst pink. But as soon as I saw it, all those worries and all that stress just went away because it was beautiful. I was about to go home with it until iridescent light pink makes her grand entrance. I was like, girl, okay, you the one, we going home. I ultimately went home with the iridescent light pink because it was a lot more saturated compared to the green calf skin and it was just so pretty. Well, mademoiselles, that is the end of our Chanel journey. I hope you enjoyed it because I really enjoyed sharing my story with you. And if you'd like to see a detailed review on any of these handbags, please let me know and I will do them. And like always, if you enjoyed this video, please hit like, comment, and subscribe.